Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick, and it's Monday, March 3rd, and it's time for our daily devotion. We are in the book of Exodus today, and uh, we are in Exodus chapter 15. We're reading verses 22 to 27. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Marah. So people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, where he tested them. He said, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in the eyes, and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases that I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elim, where, they were, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there near the water. <clears throat> After Israel was baptized in the Red Sea and walked on dry land, the Egyptian army was drowned. Following this, the people of God sang the song of Moses, praising God for his deliverance. However, Three days later, these same forgetful people were grumbling and crying for water in the wilderness. God heard Moses' prayer and showed him a wooden log. When Moses threw it into the bitter waters at Marah, they miraculously became sweet and drinkable again. God did not choose to have Moses speak to the water or place his staff in it. Instead, God told Moses to throw a wooden log into those bitter waters. Sometimes we remember God's provisions, promises, and forgiveness, but at other times we forget and grumble. If you feel like you are suffering and swallowing some bitter pills in life, you not become embittered by them. Rather, know that God works good through all of them so that you trust in him. He never leaves you, and he promises to sweeten your life through the wood of Christ's cross, which forgives all your sins and erase, eases every pain and burden. <clears throat> all right, so the theme this week is on wood. And uh, in the Exodus reading today, uh, the, the, the waters at Marah, or Mara, were, were bitter. And God instructs Moses to throw a piece, in, a piece of wood into the waters to sweeten them. Now, um, in this case, you know, the, the devotion author makes a point to say that he doesn't wave his hand or use his staff. You know, I, I think that God used different things at different times rather than always use the same thing so that people would not associate these sort of magical powers like Moses' staff. I mean, he could have used that to, to sweeten the waters, but God chose instead to, to, for him to use a piece of wood, a random piece of wood. Now, people did go on and, and associate supernatural things with, uh, with these items anyway. As we know, uh, the bronze serpent that was lifted up on a pole eventually had to be destroyed because people were um, looking at it with such a way, in, in such a way. Um, the same is true with, with the temple of God itself in Jerusalem that <coughs> Jeremiah had to prophesy against it because the people had made an idol of it. Uh, when they took the Ark of the Covenant into battle, thinking that it would bring them some kind of victory just because they had it, um, you know, it's, it's the same sort of mindset. And this also reminds me of the Transfiguration when Peter wants to build three shrines. And we know what would have happened with those three shrines had Peter done that, that they also would have become holy places that people would go there. They would worship the dirt that the shrines were built on, saying that, oh, this is where Jesus was transfigured, and they would kiss the ground, and, you know, all of these things. People have a tendency to make idols and, and to associate God's power in, in objects rather than in, in the word, rather than in the word that says, do this, and um, this will happen. So, you know, obviously that piece of wood was not kept. It was used, and then it was uh, discarded, or it was, you know, placed somewhere. Um, the staff of Moses, or, or rather, um, I don't believe it was Aaron. Anyway, um, you know, these are things that were in the Ark of the Covenant for a while, but eventually they were either lost, or, uh, you know, we, we're not sure what happened to them. But, you know, in, in Lutheran circles, we always emphasize the word and sacraments, that these are the places where we are instructed to go in order to discover God's grace. 
And so we always have uh, the divine word in the Bible, the pages of Holy Scripture, where we find the presence of the Holy Spirit. And then, of course, in uh, the waters of baptism, in the bread and wine of communion, we also are instructed to go there. And again, just like the, uh, the wood that was used to sweeten the waters at Marah, these things also are ordinary means by which God, uh, he, he um, I'm, I'm trying to think how to say this, he makes transitions or he, he transitions us, like so for baptism, we go from being dead in sin to being resurrected to new life. Uh, with the Lord's Supper, we go from uh, being sinners to being forgiven uh, because we have the, the body and blood of, of Jesus. And then we also proclaim the new covenant when we, when we receive the sacrament. So, you know, throughout the Bible, uh, we find these ordinary means that are used to uh, reveal God and to accomplish his supernatural realities in us or for us. And in the same way that the bitter water was made sweet, so these sacraments affect uh, a sort of sweetness for us in that they deliver the gospel to us, which is the greatest of all of God's promises that namely we have the forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ and in, uh, in him alone. All right, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, so with it being Monday, we have a, a joint meeting tonight with Elders and Altar Guild, and that's going to be happening at 7 p.m. as we have sort of a dry run through our um, Easter Vigil service. Then tomorrow, we have a planning meeting going on for our upcoming um, Ice Cream Social, which is going to be happening here later in the month of April. Uh, there is no youth group on Wednesday night. There is, however, if I remember correctly, choir practice, and uh, we'll announce that time tomorrow. It's escaping me right now. Uh, and then, of course, Thursday, we have Monday Thursday service. Friday, we have Good Friday service. Both of those are at 7 p.m. And then a Vesper service on Saturday. We do have most of the Holy Saturday prayer vigil slots um, taken now, but we still have some extras. So if you would like to sign up, they're mainly in the afternoon, around like between 2 and 5. So if you'd like, you can email me and I can put your name down. And then, of course, the Easter Vigil will be happening Sunday morning at 7 with a late service at 10.30. We do have the breakfast at 8.15, um, likely a hymn sing after that, and then the egg hunt, I believe, is at 9.15. And um, who knows, we may sing some more hymns after that, depending on what we get done. So a lot going on here this week. Check out our email newsletter for all our latest happenings and events. Um, thank you for watching our daily devotions. Elizabeth and I will be here tomorrow for our joint devotion. God bless this the rest of your Monday.